Hello and welcome to Lesson 3.3, .3, Proving Lines Are Parallel. This is a follow-up to Lesson 3.2, which is in that lesson you learned that if lines were parallel, then we had certain conditions about their angles that we could, or sorry, certain conclusions we could make about their angles. Um, so today we're, in this video, we are going to flip that around. We're going to assume certain things about the angles and conclude that the lines are in fact parallel. So we're going to be taking the converse of all those theorems and postulates we learned in the previous lesson 3.2. So to review that, we're going to begin by stating the converse of each of these statements in our warm-up. Take a few moments to try and write those out, and then click play whenever you're ready to check your answers. Okay, let's take a look. We should have gotten these three statements for the converses of each of the three warm-up statements. So check there, make sure you've read those correctly. Make sure your statements match these, and we are ready to move on. Once again, in this video, we will be moving through the vocabulary pretty quickly. You've hopefully already read most of this, so we should be able to get through the vocab pieces and really focus on the examples. We have our converse statements for each of these, and in each one, instead of writing it as the converse of, corresponding angles postulate, we could write the corresponding angles converse, and it would mean the same thing. So you'll see me write this a lot. But once again here, we know from Lesson 3.2 that if lines are parallel, then corresponding lines are, or corresponding angles are congruent. Well now we're going to flip that around. If we know corresponding angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. So let's take a look here at example 1. And once again, instead of calling it the converse of the corresponding angles postulate, we can call it the corresponding angles converse. So in example 1a, we're given that angle 4 and angle 8 are congruent. If you look at the diagram, 4 and 8 are corresponding angles. So we can say this. By the corresponding angles converse, L is parallel to M. Part B. The measure of angle 3 is given to us as 4x minus 80. The measure of angle 7 is given to us as 3x minus 50, and we're told that x equals 30. Well, looking at 3 and 7, if you look at 3 and 7, three and seven are corresponding angles. So if I can show they're congruent, then I can establish that the lines are parallel by the corresponding angles converse. So what you need to do in this one is show that the measure of angle 3 and measure of angle 7 equal the same thing when x is 30. So what I want you to do is plug in 30 for x in both situations and see what angle measure you get. Alright, you should have gotten that, and if you did that, we can take a look at what your work might look like. Measure of angle 3 when you plug in 30 gives you 40 degrees. 30 times 4 is 120, 120 minus 80 is 40. When you plug in 30 for x in this one, 3 times 30 minus 50 is 90 minus 50, which is again 40 degrees. So we can say that they are congruent, so by the corresponding angles converse, L is parallel to M. Now. One thing I did notice in making this video, that some of the examples you have in your notes are incorrect. They're not supposed to be there, like part C of example 1 really doesn't work out. If you look at 5 and 7, 5 and 7 should not be the same thing. When you plug in 13, you get the same thing. So that's a typo. That's not supposed to be there. We're going to eliminate that example for the sake of time. There will be some other examples that either need to be uh, rewritten or eliminated, and I will show you those as we get to them. But first, let's look at one more postulate. Remember, a postulate is something that is uh, true based on just the way the, the mathematics work, and we don't have to prove that. So this postulate is called the parallel postulate. It says, through any point P not on line L, there's exactly one line parallel to L. So if I started with a line L, and I put a point P not on line L, there's only going to be one line that goes through point P that is also parallel to L. We'll do a little bit of manipulation here. I can only put one line through there, through point P, that is also going to be parallel to L. That's what that postulate states. 
Now these other three theorems come from the three theorems that they are like in ex Lesson 3.2. And these are the converses of alternate interior angles theorem, alternate exterior angles theorem, and same side interior angles theorem. But once again, remember you can write these as alternate interior angles converse, alternate exterior angles converse, and same side interior angles converse. So what they basically say is that first, if alternate interior angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. Or if alternate exterior angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. And lastly, if same side interior angles are supplementary, then the lines are parallel. So we're going to use these theorems as well as the corresponding angles converse to show that lines are parallel. In this example we want to show R and S are parallel. So we are given 4 and 8 are congruent. 4 and 8 are what kind of angles? Hopefully you said alternate exterior angles. Since alternate exterior angles are congruent, by the alternate exterior angles converse, R is parallel to S. Part B, we're talking about measures of angles 2 and 3. If you look at 2 and 3, those are same side interior angles. So I don't want them to be congruent. I would like for them to be supplementary. But if I plug 5 in for x in both situations, you should see that that is the case. So why don't you go ahead and do that. Plug in 5 for x in both equations and tell me what each angle measure equals. If those two numbers add up to 180, then these are in fact supplementary and r and s are parallel. Okay, again, if you need any extra time throughout, pause the video, but we should be ready to take a look at our work. If I plug in 5 for x in the first equation, 10 times 5 is 50, 50 plus 8 is 58 degrees. If I plug it in for x in the second equation for measure of angle 3, 25 times 5 is 125, minus 3 is 122. If I add those two together, we do get 180 degrees. So angle 2 and angle 3 are supplementary angles, and since same side interior angles are supplementary, by the same side interior angles converse, R is parallel to S. Okay, we just have one more part of this example. Example 3 does actually apply this time. And we're talking about angles 3 and 7. 3 and 7 are considered alternate interior angles, so it would be important for these to be congruent for the lines to be parallel. So that's what we want to show. When x is 50, if I plug that information in, give you, again, pause the video at any time if you need the extra time. 2 times 50 is 100. 50 plus 50 is also 100. So we know they are congruent because their measures are equal. By the alternate interior angles converse, R is parallel to S. What I would like for you to understand is that the answers we're writing in each of these cases are these conclusive statements. And those are things that we might be able to state in some form of a proof. And that's what we're going to do in these next couple examples. So let's take a look. Example 3a, we've got a proof here. Let's ignore that box, undo. We've got a proof here, and there do need to be some corrections made. Your proof in your book, the given in, or in your note packet, sorry, has some given information and the proof statement that need to be switched. This is what it should say, because in the diagram they mark L and M parallel, and that's what we're starting with to be able to prove that P and R are parallel at the end. So if you would make that switch in your notes, just quickly cross off what's written there and write this. L is parallel to M is given to you. Angle 1 and angle 3 are still given to you as congruent. And we want to prove that P and R are parallel. So let's take a look here at this proof. First we start off with the given information. Because I know L and M are parallel and they've marked angle 2 here, I can say something about angles 1 and 2 before I get to this other given information. So we're going to state this given first. Then we're going to look at angles 1 and 2. Those are corresponding angles with these parallel lines cut by transversal P. So again, back to lesson 3, 2, if corresponding angles are given to you by this diagram and the lines are parallel, then those corresponding angles are congruent. So I can say angle 1 is congruent to angle 2 by the corresponding angles theorem. This one, this comes from lesson 3.2.
All right, you don't have to write that in a proof always. This is just for your notes so you remember where we got this theorem. This is not one of the current theorems. Now, we are also referring to angles 1 and 3 being congruent in the given information, so let's use that information to help ourselves out. And that's just given. Now since 1 and 2 are congruent and 1 and 3 are congruent, we can say that 3 and 2 are congruent by the transitive property. But if you look at what angles 3 and 2 are, 3 and 2 are alternate exterior angles if I'm looking at lines P and R cut by transversal M. Well, you've shown alternate exterior angles are congruent, so we have a theorem from today that states those lines must be parallel also. And that is the alternate exterior angles converse, which is from the current lesson 3.3. All right, and in our final proof in these notes, there's one correction you do need to make before moving on, and this should really just be a uh, a seven-step proof, not eight. So go ahead and just cross off that last line through eight. We're not going to use that. We can do this in seven steps. And what I want you to do first, be, rather than try and do this proof all on our own from beginning to end, I'm going to give you some information, and we're going to fill in some of the missing pieces. So if you look here, I've given you some of these statements. The ones that you can read, these nice bold statements, go ahead and write those in. Take some time, get them written in, and then we'll proceed with the rest of the proof. All right, so you should have this. We're starting with all of our givens at once here. In this situation, we've got three lines, L, M, and N, and these angles here. We want to prove that L and M are parallel. And here's how we're going to do this. We're going to start with our given information that 1 and 4 are congruent and that 3 and 4 are supplementary. So, we're given 1 is congruent to 4 and 3 and 4 are supplementary, that's given. And then this next part of the proof uses the vertical angles theorem as a reason. Well, if you look at the diagram, there's only one pair of vertical angles listed. That's 2 and 3, so that must be important. 2 and 3 have to be congruent. And now this next statement, the measure of angle 1 equals the measure of angle 4, and measure of angle 2 equals the measure of angle 3, all that comes from these two statements, because we know they're congruent. And so that's just our definition of congruence that allows us to state this. So that's the reason we must use. And then in the next step, since we're talking about angle measures, the definition of supplementary angles tells me something about angle measures. The angles that are supplementary are 3 and 4. Since I'm talking about their measures, I know that if these are supplementary, then their measures add up to 180 degrees, and so that's what we should write. The next line uses that same kind of format, but instead of angle 3, we're talking about angle 1, and instead of angle 4, we're talking about angle 2. But remember, 1 is congruent to 4, and 2 is congruent to 3, and so their measures are equal, so I can substitute here and say that 1 and 2 add up to 180. And again, that reason is substitution. Now since 1 and 2 add up to 180 degrees, these two angles here are supplementary. And that's just by definition of supplementary angles again. But if 1 and 2 are supplementary, that's why I can say lines are parallel. If you look at the diagram, if these are the two lines you're trying to prove parallel, this is your transversal. 1 and 2 are same side interior angles, and we've just proven those are supplementary. So by the same side interior angles converse, L is parallel to M. Now this proof may have been a little more difficult, not quite used to it yet, that's why I gave you part of the information at first. It will make more sense, but remember this key part of our lesson today. If we are given that lines are parallel, we are able to conclude facts about the angles created, alternate interior, alternate exterior, same side interior, and corresponding. Those will be in our conclusion, what we are able to get to because we know they're parallel. But if we know about the angles first, that the angles are either congruent or supplementary, then we can conclude the lines to be parallel based on the theorems and postulates given to you in this lesson. So feel free to ask any questions, and I look forward to working on this assignment in class.